Shalom Akim. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Ara Hakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Shalom to the sincere brethren out there pushing this word and to you sincere listeners. Just want to go into a quick lesson, which uh, I'll probably entitle it Esau's, uh, you know, extermination policy will not be fulfilled, you know, or something, you know, to that effect. And, you know, the reason why I wanted to go into this lesson is because we know the moves that, you know, this damn devil is making and what his ultimate goal and plan is with what's going on. You know, so they just made, you know, the, uh, well, Pfizer, you know, just got, uh, you know, full FDA approval. So now, you know, this damn devil can move forward with his uh, agenda. And we know what ultimately his plan is. You know, his plan is to, you know, pretty much exterminate all so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay? And he's, you know, going to uh, demonize us as he has done in the past. You know, because the extermination policy, you know, of the Israelites is not a new thing. Esau Edom is not the first to attempt this. You know, other nations have attempted it and they failed. And the same thing is going to happen to Esau Edom. You know? So, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai willing, this is an edifying lesson. This is Romans 15 and 4. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So, we're supposed to read the scriptures, you know, absorb these different accounts that are in the scriptures, okay? And learn from these things, man. The main thing you're supposed to grasp when, uh, you know, reading these accounts, the theme is reoccurring. Trusting Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Trusting Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Have faith. All throughout the scriptures, man. Okay. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay, and our hope is contained in the scriptures. Okay. The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that's contained in this Bible gives us hope. Okay, because like I uh, said previously, exterminating the nation of Israel is not a, a, a new thing. Esau is not the, the first one to come up with that uh, idea, you know? This has been, you know, uh, uh, this has attempted to be implemented throughout the, uh, the, 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 his, the history. You know, throughout history, this has uh, attempted, been attempted by these uh, different nations. You know, Esau Edom is just, you know, the, the current nation to pick it up, okay? But what has happened throughout all these different uh, times, man, their plan has failed. Okay, just as the plan of Esau Edom is gonna fail. Now, there's an account that I want to go into that uh, you know was concerning, you know, our nation being exterminated. Man, there was a plan and a plot that a certain individual had, which you know this individual was an Edomite, uh, an Agagite, an Amalekite, you know, to be more specific, man. And this is the same thing that's gonna happen this go around okay the only difference is you know they're actually going to put hands on some of the Israelites some of the nation of Israel but the elect of Yahweh Shai will not be touched okay which that's you know uh, what this account signifies you know the nation of Israel not being touched here signifies the elect or represents the elect this is Esther uh, three and I'll start at one It says after these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman the son of uh, Hamamethatha the Agagite which uh, uh, Agagite is a descendant of Amalek Okay, so you know uh, uh, them rats man This was back during the uh, Medio uh, Persian Empire It says and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants which were in the king's gate said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matter would stand 
for he had told them that he was a Jew. He was an Israelite. Okay. So the same thing is going to happen. This go around, man. It's going to be noised abroad that, you know, that there's uh, Israelites, you know, and they're acting contrary to, you know, uh, how everybody, well, they're acting contrary to the king's commandment. What's just going on right now? You know, you just had the, uh, you know, the Pfizer has, has gained full, you know, FDA approval. So you can expect mandates to, you know, come out, you know, uh, uh, like hotcakes, man. Uh, verse 4 it says now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him and he hearkened not unto them that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matter would stand for he had told them that he was a Jew and the Israelites and Amalekite and Amalek specifically are mortal enemies man okay the most I said that there will be war between Amalek and the nation of Israel from generation to generation and the same thing is going on now our main enemy is you know the so-called Jew all right, he's the one orchestrating this whole thing. He's the one pushing for this these uh, different mandates, man, to try to jab up you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans specifically. It says, uh, and when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And that's you know essentially the same thing that's going on right now. Jake is not bowing down to this damn devil and hearkening to you know uh, his commandments, man. He wants you to, you know, take his his potion, but Jake is saying, no, we ain't, we ain't doing that. You know, transgressing the king's commandment. He's, he's mad, man. Verse six, it says, and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. And this is the same mindset that this damn devil has today. He wants to completely exterminate you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay? The same, uh, you know, program, he's running it back. All right? Verse 7, it says, In the first month, that is the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Azurus, uh, they cast Pur, that is the lot, for Haman from day to day and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is the month Adar. And Haman said unto King Azurus, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And the same thing is pretty much going to be said, man. Well, if I'm not mistaken, you know, I uh, believe uh, one of these governors had pretty much said this same thing. The problem is the African-Americans. They're the reason why we're in the predicament that we're in, because they don't want to go and, you know, take the potion. They don't want that, that snake's venom, man. It says there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of the kingdom and you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans are spread throughout Babylon. It says, and their laws are diverse from all people and Jake, even in their wickedness, has a completely different get down from any other nation that's down here. OK, the majority of these other nations, you can see they're getting on the program of Esau Edom, but Jake ain't, ain't really getting down like that, man. You know, outside of, of Gad, you know, Gad's completely bugged out, man. You know, their their numbers when it comes to this uh, potion is, is outrageous, you know. But the ways of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are completely different than the rest of these people down here. You know, well, you go down there uh, to Jamaica, they ain't, they ain't having no uh, dealings with that potion, man. They don't want it, you know. And this is a sentiment amongst Jake. Okay, not only Jake, uh, you know, in Babylon and on, you know, in the Western Hemisphere, but also in other parts of the world. All right. It says, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's laws. So these different mandates is going to be coming down. Jake is not going to adhere to them. Okay, which is going to cause the finger to be pointed at Jake. Okay. And uh, have, you know, these people be mad at us, okay? And then Esau's going, you know, pass different policies to come down upon you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right? It says, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. And that's what they're going to say. You shouldn't have these people in your society, man, okay? Well, with these different, uh, you know, uh, passes that that's being mandated, okay? 
you gotta have, you know, the potion to go to certain places. The main people that are being uh, ostracized are so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans because they are the ones that do not want to take his damn potion, man. Okay, so you can see a definitive uh, uh, split, you know, uh, uh, being made. And the main people that are getting on board with the program of Esau Edom are these other nations. You know, the brother uh, Kanak, he did a video, you know, speaking on it briefly. And he, you know, bought it up as well. You can see uh, a clear divide, man. Okay, because out here in uh, San Francisco, you know, you can eat uh, outside if you, you know, don't have a potion or you had a proof that you have uh, the potion inside you. And the only people that are sitting outside are, you know, Jake. Okay, and the heathen are inside, man. It says, if it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. Okay, and what are they saying, you know, concerning uh, the people that don't want to take the potion? You, sh you shouldn't be allowed in the grocery store. You sh you sh you we should make their uh, life as uncomfortable as possible, man. You know, some people even call for the death of, <laughs> you know, people that don't have the potion. It says, if it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it to the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. Okay, which Agag, you know, that was the chief, uh, uh, you know, prince among the Amalekites, which Amalek is the, the chief tribe of Edom. You know, so you could liken the Agagites to the elites, all right? They're the ruling uh, class amongst the uh, Edomites. And they're saying the same thing, man. This has been their uh, policy. You know, this has been their agenda to exterminate you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. It says, and the king said unto Haman, the silver is given to thee, the people also to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants, and to the governors that were over every province, and to the rulers of every people over every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language in the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Okay? And this is the same thing that's going to be implemented in this society, man. The scriptures talk about Jacob's trouble. Okay? Which is not just going to be one day. It's going to be a certain time period. Where this man is going to come down with that great wrath Okay, now us that believe in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai This account here is of great importance to us, man it's Just as I read in Romans, the 15th chapter Okay, the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning Alright, that we, you know, we're going to be comforted In, uh, uh, you know, the end result of this account, man Okay, because at the end of the day, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai did not Allow the nation of Israel to be exterminated Because that's not the will of the Heavenly Father Okay, now you're going to have a lot of Israelites That's going to get judged Nevertheless, there's going to be a remnant That's going to be delivered, man And that's our hope Okay, that we're a part of that remnant, man So we're putting our best foot forward And doing the things that please Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai In the attempt to be part of that number, man Because they're all going to be Israelites That's going to be saved We haven't been forsaken by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai And never... In history, never in the scriptures can you show me where Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has completely forsaken the nation of Israel, man. Time and time again, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has delivered us, okay? And this time is, is not, no different. It says, uh, and the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Dar. And to take the spoil of them for a prey The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province Was published unto all people That they should be ready against that day The post went out being hastened by the king's commandment And the decree was given in Shushan the palace And the king and Haman sat down to drink But the city of Shushan was perplexed So there's going to be, you know, everybody's going to come on one consent, man 
to come after you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right, just let me bring a quick precept out. This is spoken about in the scriptures, man. The Most High is going to run this back. Well, before I bring this out, let me get this. Ecclesiastes 3 and 15, it says, That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. So there's nothing new under the sun, man. Everything that happens or has happened is going to happen again. The Most High pretty much just runs things back, you know. And there's been multiple occasions where these other nations have had it in their mind to completely exterminate us. And it has not come to pass, man. Okay. And the same thing applies to this account. All right. So this is uh, 2 Ezra 16. Let's see here. We're just going to jump straight to the point. 2 Ezra 16 and 68, it says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. That's Jake being thrown in these concentration camps, man. And what is he going to offer you in those camps? The potion and the haragma. It says, And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. Verse 70, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities... Okay, so pretty much all throughout the country, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord, Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, Shai. Okay, which, you know, uh, mainly is going into the elect, but also the nation of Israel as a whole, man. Okay, because the scriptures talk about Jacob's trouble, a time when Jacob is going to be distressed on all sides, man. Okay, this man has an extermination policy out for you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And our people literally have no clue that this thing is on the books, man. Okay. It says they shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. So this, these people are gonna be going crazy on you, Jakes, man. Okay. Especially these different uh, Gurkha troops. You know the military men that they gonna have out here, the mercenaries, the police. Okay. Take a look at what's going on out there in Australia, man. That's coming to America. And the main people they're going to be gunning after are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay? You watch all these different uh, post-apocalyptic movies or, you know, these movies where it shows, uh, you know, uh, the takeover of America. Okay? The movies like Handmaid's Tale, uh, the Purge series. Okay? Who's the main one being targeted, man? You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. It's not a coincidence that he puts that in his movies, okay? This is how it's going to be, man. This man is coming for you, all right? And a lot of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you're going to die, man. The only ones that's going to be delivered are the true servants of Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shai, the ones that trust in him, man, okay? It says they shall be like madmen, sparing none. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the goal in the fire. Which is talking about the elect. The elect are the only ones that are going to be delivered from this, man. The rest of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you ain't going to make it. The Most High going to judge you, man. And you're going to use Esau, Edom. And these different marauder groups that's out here and the mercenaries that he's going to send to judge you. All right. We're going to jump around here. You know, and I suggest, uh, you know, if y'all have time, you should uh, read this account, man. You know, this will really boost your faith and, you know, increase your, uh, you know, your hope in your Abba Shemi Abba Shai, man. As the Most High does some real, you know, far out things you know seemingly impossible things this is esther verse uh chapter 5 verse 9 it says then when haman fought that day joyful and with a glad heart but when haman saw mordecai in the king's gate that he stood not up nor moved for him he was full of indignation against mordecai so he was mad man okay even though the king accepted his policy to exterminate you know uh the nation of israel on a certain day he was still mad because Mordecai wasn't bound down to him. And that's the mindset of Esau either, man. If you don't listen to what he tells you to do, if you don't bow down to him and, and look at him as your master, he's mad at you, man. 
Okay, the only capacity that you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are supposed to play in the eyes of Esau Edom is that of a slave and a servant, man. If you buck up against his orders, his commands, he's mad at you. He wants to put you to death. Okay? It says that he stood not up nor moved for him. He was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself. And when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh, his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and all the things wherein the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, moreover, yea, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself. And tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh his wife and all his friends unto him, let a gallow be made of 50 cubits high and tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. So he, you know, was plotting not only against the Israelites, but Mordecai himself, man. So he wanted to put Mordecai to death because he wouldn't bow down to him. All right. Now watch how Yahabashim Yahushai flipped it on his damn devil, man. And the same thing is going to happen to you believers out there, man. Okay, we're going to find ourselves in very precarious situations And the Most High is going to flip the situation for us, man He's going to deliver us Okay, just as he delivered our forefathers in the past This is uh, Ezra, or Esther, Salakia, chapter 7, verse 3 It says, Then Esther the queen answered and said If I have found favor in thy sight, O king And if it please the king Let my life be given me at my petition And my people at my request for we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain and to perish. But if we have been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not prevail all the king's damage. It said, Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he and where is he that durst presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. So the Most High flipped it on him, man. He had in his mind to completely exterminate the nation of Israel and uh, hang Mordecai, you know, from the gallows. Okay? But the Most High flipped it on him. You know, Esther. She pretty much gained a favor of the king. She started uh, dealing with him. You know, she became his wife. You know, and uh, the woman of the king, you know, she can do certain things, man. She can influence the king, you know, to do uh, certain things. Okay? So the Most High set Esther up, you know, to have this calamity uh, uh, pass over us, man. All right? It says, uh... Then the king uh, returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed. Yeah, and Haman uh, was fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And Harbona, one of the king's chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Yeah, and that was the end of Haman, man. You know, when you read uh, further on, you know, it tells you how, you know, uh, the plot was pretty much, you know, stopped. You know, and then all the people, you know, pretty much they wanted to adopt the customs of the nation of Israel. OK, but the main, you know, point of bringing this account out is that the extermination. All right. That this damn devil had proposed in his mind to do upon the nation of Israel was stopped in his tracks, man. And what happened to him? He ended up getting put to death. OK, he ended up falling, man. And the same thing is going to happen to this damn devil. All right. Because one thing that this damn devil does not realize is that the Most High, you know, uh, we're in his favor, man. Okay? 
It's not the will of the Heavenly Father that the nation of Israel be exterminated. And it never has been the will of the Heavenly Father for the nation of Israel to be exterminated. This is Exodus 2 and 23. It says, And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their, their cry came up unto the Most High by reason of the bondage. And the same thing has happened, man. We've been completely oppressed in this society, and we're continuing continuing to be oppressed by this damn devil. Okay? And the moves that this damn devil is making, getting ready to come down with that great wrath, you have certain Israelites crying out about these things, man. Okay? And our cry has come up before Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. It says, and their cry came up unto the Most High by reason of the bondage. And the Most High heard their groaning, and the Most High remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And the same thing is happening right now, man. Okay? 100% guaranteed the Most High is remembering the covenant that he made with our forefathers and with us, man. Okay? So the Most High is not going to let this damn devil have his way. The Most High has a remnant that he's going to deliver out of this place. Verse 25, it says, And the Most High looked upon the children of Israel and had respect unto them. Okay? And that's what we're calling out to you, how about showing you how we to do, man. Okay? Remember the covenant that he made with us and our forefathers and establish it, man. Don't let this damn devil do whatever he wants to do. Okay? We're crying out, man. This is Isaiah 62 and 6. It says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. So that's the cry that's constantly going out. To Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, okay. Day and night we're crying unto the Heavenly Father, man. Okay. When we make these videos, we go out on the highways, the hedges, and expose this man's plans. Okay. Not only are we warning the people, we're we're telling Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai about this man's plans, man. Okay. And crying unto Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai so he can help us, man. It says, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. That's that crying. And the Heavenly Father is hearkening unto our cries, man. It says, and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And we're not going to stop crying unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai until we get delivered, man. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai will it. Okay? We want the Most High to remember that covenant and deliver us from the hands of this damn devil, man. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, because like I stated earlier, it's not the will of the Heavenly Father that the nation of Israel gets exterminated. Okay, quite the contrary, man. <laughs> it's the will of the Heavenly Father that you Edomites get exterminated. <laughs> okay. This is uh, Sirach 27 and 26. It says, Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that setteth a trap shall be taken therein. So this trap that you setting for the so-called... Negro, Latino, and Native American, you're going to end up falling in it, man. This damn devil is very calculated, man. He set this whole ordeal up to demonize you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay? He know you ain't going to take what he has to offer you, but he's going to demonize you, you know, through his media, okay, and paint the picture like you, you're the one responsible for all the trouble that these people are going through. And really, he's the one that put hell upon these people, man. He's the one that passed these different measures, okay? But he's going to, you know, paint it to justify the wrath that he's getting ready to come down here with, man. But Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to deliver the nation of Israel from the wrath of this damn devil, man. Okay, the Israel of the Most High. The rest of you, you're going to die, man. You know, the Most High doesn't consider you his people. This is Psalm 64 and 1. It says, uh, hear my voice, O my power, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. And who is the enemy? Esau, Edom. Okay? And you want to be preserved from the things this damn devil, you know, uh, has in his mind to do unto us. It says, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Which this is talking about the elites. We want to be hid from the things that they plan on doing, man. Okay? It says, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. And that's what he's getting ready to do, man, on a high level. He's getting ready to demonize you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as he did in the past. Okay? 
What did he do when he first established this place, man? He called you so-called Native American savages, okay? He called you so-called Latino savages, man. He called you so-called Negro savages and monkeys and, and animals, man. The same thing is going to happen. So you can justify the things that he's going to do to you, okay? It says he wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect, okay? How are they shooting in secret? You don't know that they're the ones that's implementing these different policies, man. When these different politicians make these statements, oh, blame the so-called African-Americans for uh, uh, the lockdowns, you know? You're not looking at the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, the Gettys, you know, the Bilderbergs, the Vanderbilts. You're not looking at them as the ones that's, you know, saying these things. They got their front men doing it, man, okay? So you'll look at the politicians and say, okay, look, these are the ones that's doing it, but really it's the ones behind the scenes. It's the elites, okay? But they seemingly, you know, have clean hands because they're not saying it on the camera, okay? Nevertheless, they're the ones that's pu pushing this policy forth, man. It says that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not, just as Haman didn't fear. You know, there was no fear in Haman when he came up with that proposal and, and brought it to the king, man, and got the signet to execute it, okay? He was on his high horse, man. He's like, look, the king exalted me. I'm getting ready to, you know, be able to execute this thing. All right, I'm going to do whatever. I'm going to be able to do whatever I want to, okay? But one thing that he did not take into account is that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai does not want the nation of Israel exterminated, man. And the same thing applies today. It says, suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. And one of those snares is this potion that he's offering, man. Okay, because if you take it, you know, hey, <laughs> you, you, you can, you, can uh, uh, you know, start counting your days, man. If you allow this man to put that potion inside of you, you can start marking the days, you know, because it's only a matter of time before you drop dead. Okay, but if you don't take it, he's going to demonize you. All right. It says they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say who shall see them. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of them and every one. It's like it, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But the Most High shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. Okay, so this whole plan that these elites have is not going to come to fruition. They're going to kill a lot of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But they are not going to be able to get the elect of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. The Most High is going to intervene, just as He did in Egypt, just just as He did uh, uh, between us and Haman, okay, and the other accounts that are in the Scriptures, man. You know, so I just wanted to go into that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Willing, it was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Bahashim Arahakadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles, the great millstone. Shalom.